this is James. Let's talk about Euclidean space. Definition 1.1 from section 1.1 from chapter 1 of Barrett O'Neill's Elementary Differential Geometry defines Euclidean 3 space, R3, as the set of all ordered triples of real numbers. So such a triple, say for example this bold script P, uh, can be written as this ordered triple P1, P2, P3, and this triple is what we call a point in R3. Figured here is an example of what a three-dimensional space might look like in a diagram. So we've chosen to use uh, this vector notation for P in handwriting, but that's just the same as a, a bold P in written text. And we can identify that point in space using the, the three coordinates of P, P1, P2, and P3, which are just distances along these three axes, which are being denoted E1, E2, and E3. Uh, here we're using E1, E2, and E3, rather than say X, Y, and Z, because we're going to have a, a special role for those uh, notation later. We should ask, what is R3 before we start using it, like we do in Calc 3? To be clear, R3 is a group, uh, but we ultimately want to talk about R3 as a vector space. So let's prove that R3 works as a vector space uh, under these conditions. First, let's prove this the following lemma. The lemma states, component-wise addition in R3 forms an additive abelian group. Recall that an abelian group is a group that's commutative. So for the proof, let's start by defining the addition of points as follows. Given two points, P and Q, with the uh, components P1, P2, P3, and Q1, Q2, Q3, respectively, and define their sum as component-wise addition of those components. So for, uh, for P plus Q, that point will be P1 plus Q1 in the first component, P2 plus Q2 in the second, P3 plus Q3 in the third. In order to confirm that R3 with addition defined naturally is a group, uh, it must be associative, have an identity element, and have an inverse for each element in the set. So we prove those one at a time. Firstly, we show associativity by taking points P, Q, and R, and noting that R, the set of real numbers, is already a group. So, by definition, P plus Q, then plus R, is equal to the sum of P and Q in coordinates, plus R in coordinates. Then, adding these two vectors together, we get P1 plus Q1, then plus R1, etc., etc. By the associativity of real numbers with addition, in each coordinate we can regroup. Then by the definition of uh, the sum of points in R3, we can split P plus Q plus R, and then write that uh, in, in bold script notation. This is uh, enough proof to show that we have associativity in R3, but just to get a sense of what's going on geometrically in the figure below, uh, we have three vectors, end to end to end, and we're adding them together to symbolize the addition of points, even though uh, 
but we, we shouldn't get too ahead of ourselves and start thinking of points as vectors. That'll come later. Anyway, uh, we, we, can, we can view this addition of three vectors in a row either by grouping P and Q first with that first diagonal, P plus Q, and then adding R. Or we could group Q and R and get the second diagonal and then add that to the end of P. Either way, we're ending at the same point. So that should give us confidence that addition is associative in R3. Secondly, we need to show that there is an identity element in R3. And of course, that identity element is just the origin, 0, 0, 0. We can check by uh, writing p plus 0, the origin, uh, in terms of coordinates, and then using the fact that 0 is the additive identity of the real numbers to uh, return just p for that addition. The same process works for 0 plus p equal uh, th the same uh, rules apply to the uh, equation 0 plus p equals p and that gives us the identity element. In the figure, which might not be especially useful, we can uh, picture the addition of 0 as really the addition of uh, no, uh, an arrow of no length to the end of uh, an arrow. Secondly, we check that R3 has an identity element and of course that identity element will be the origin 0, 0, 0. When we add the origin to a point P, we can write in coordinates P1 plus 0, P2 plus 0, P3 plus 0, then using the identity property in R, we can simply write that as P1, P2, P3, which is of course just the point P. Similarly, we can show that 0 plus P equals P, which is to say that the addition of the origin to P, either on the right or on the left, uh, leaves P unchanged to prove that it's the identity element in R3 as well. In the figure, uh, we illustrate the addition of the arrow of zero length, which is the origin, at either the tip or the tail, as leaving P unchanged. Thirdly and finally, we prove the existence of an inverse. Given a point P, we consider the point negative P, where each of the coordinates of negative P are just the negatives of the coordinates of P. Then P plus the point negative P equals P1 plus negative P1, P2 plus negative P2, P3 plus negative P3. And of course, each of those coordinates is zero. So this sum of points is the origin. Thus, we've shown that R3, with addition, component-wise, is a group. Uh, to show that R3 is an abelian group, we check that addition is commutative. We won't waste your time with repeating that uh, process. Uh, but it's naturally inherited from the commutativity of addition in R. We can picture the addition of two points, again using arrows, uh, as looking like one half of a parallelogram. So either we start with Q and then put P to its tip, or we start with P and put Q to its tip, and either way we'll end up at the same uh, opposite uh, corner of a parallelogram.
Now we prove that R3 is a vector space using component-wise addition and scalar multiplication as the operations in that vector space. A vector space by definition is an abelian group with some defined scalar multiplication. For R3, scalar multiplication is defined as follows. Given a point P and a real number alpha, we have alpha times P equal to alpha PI for I equals 1, 2, and 3. Firstly, we prove that scalar multiplication is distributive over vector addition. To do so, we take two points, P, plus, uh, P and Q, we add them, and then we multiply their sum by alpha. We write this in coordinates, and then we use the definition of scalar multiplication to multiply each of those coordinates by alpha. We then use the distributivity of real numbers to distribute each of those coordinates, uh, alpha across the sum pi plus qi. And then we use the definition of vector addition, or I should say uh, the addition of points in R3, and rewrite this as a times p plus uh, alpha times p plus alpha times q. Next, we prove the distributivity of scalar addition. Given two scalars, alpha and beta, and a point p, we first use the definition of scalar multiplication to write the coordinates of uh, this vector as alpha plus beta times pi. Then we use the distributivity of real numbers to write alpha plus beta pi as alpha pi plus beta pi. And then we use the definition of scalar uh, of vector addition to write this as a alpha p plus beta p. Next, we prove associativity of scalar multiplication. Again, we take two scalars, alpha and beta, and a point p. We compute alpha times beta p. First, we write in coordinates, alpha times beta pi. Then we use the definition of scalar multiplication to bring alpha into each of the components. Then we use the associativity of multiplication of real numbers to write alpha beta times pi for each component. And then we use the definition of scalar multiplication again to pull out the scalar alpha beta and we're left with alpha beta times p. With the axiom satisfied, we have proven that R3 is a vector space. Next, we'll use uh, definition 1.2, which is the definition for the natural coordinate functions of R3. Uh, here we introduce the notation x, y, and z. These are the real valued functions on R3 such that for each point p with coordinates p1, p2, and p3, x of p equals p1, y of p equals p2, and z of p equals p3. Our final definition, 1.3, is the definition of a differentiable function. We say a real valued function f on R3 is differentiable, or infinitely differentiable, or smooth, or of class C infinity, provided all partial derivatives of f of all orders exist and are continuous. Here we should note that the addition and multiplication of functions on R3 is in the manner that we are used to. For example, given functions f and g in C infinity, 
uh, we define the addition of f and g at a point p to be the component-wise addition of the vectors, which are f and g evaluated at p. The product f times g evaluated at p is the product of the outputs of f of p and g of p. Thank mm -hmm. you.